the video on gases, take a minute and set up your page. Pause this whenever you need to. And what we're going to be covering now would be TEKS 9A. And 9A says describe and calculate. So here's where our calculations are going to start. Describe and calculate the relationships between pressure, volume, uh, temperature, and number of moles. N is number of moles. For an ideal gas, as described by Avogadro's law, I'm going to put these in alphabetical order, A, B, C, D, Boyle's law, Charles Law, Dalton's Law, it's actually Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure, but so I'm going to put dot 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 there, and the Ideal Gas Law. And I'll tell you, I'm also going to include um, Gay-Lussac's law just because it's all pressure and volume and temperature and stuff on there. Okay, so first thing we're going, we're, I'm going to remind you of, we're going to deal with ideal gases. And when we deal with ideal gases, it's called the ideal gas law. Remember that they obey all five rules of the KMT. So when we talk about ideal gas law, we are talking about gases that are obviously gases. They're not in on the border or on the version uh, on the on the on the line between that um, gas and and turning back into a liquid. There, okay. And when we talk about the ideal gases, what we have is the first equation: PV equals nRT. PV equals nRT per nert. Okay, so P is pressure, and atmosphere is what's the what's one of the ones that we use that I like to use a lot. But it can be some other stuff, and and if you look at your yellow pages, then you'll see what I'm talking about. V is volume, and it's in liters. Okay, so that's a big deal. It has to be in liters. How do you go from milliliters to liters? Come over here to the side. Milliliters, so 1,000 milliliters equals one liter, right? So if I want to go from milliliters to liters, so I've got it in milliliters. Let's say I've got 152 milliliters. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 1,000. Okay, and that means if I want to go backwards, I have to multiply by a thousand. So I've got PV, I have N is moles, I have R, and R is the ideal gas constant. It's a constant, which means it's a set number. And if you look on your yellow pages, get your yellow pages if you don't have them with you already. What are you thinking? If we look at our yellow pages, I've given you a couple of the ideal ga of the gas constants. If we're using atmospheres, it's 0 0.0821, and I'm going to write on your yellow pages, and you guys need to write on your yellow pages too, because the unit of measurement here for this ideal gas constant is 0 0.0821, and it's liter times atmosphere divided by moles times the Kelvin temperature. And if we use kilopascals instead, pop out the liter and stick in the KPA. If we use millimeters of mercury, pop out the liter and stick in the millimeters of mercury. So it's a really awkward unit of measurement for this. 
And since a lot of times when we first start out dealing with the ideal gas law, I'll kind of not write in that unit of measurement because it tends to throw people off a little bit. But here's your unit of measurement. And what's cool about this is that everything will, all the units of measurement will cancel out except for the one that you're looking for on here. So get your yellow pages handy. Keep them handy because I'll refer to those a few times. So we have P, V, N, R, T, and T is the Kelvin temperature. Okay, so Kelvin, how do we go from Celsius to Kelvin? It is really, really, really simple. So I'm gonna put this down here, Celsius to Kelvin. So if I have zero degrees Celsius, I need to add 273. If I'm going from Kelvin to Celsius, I'm gonna subtract. 273. So if we're looking at absolute zero, that's zero degrees Kelvin, then I'm going to subtract 273 degrees. So zero Kelvin is negative 273 Celsius. Okay. We can take this equation right here, and this is one of those AP connections. We can take this equation and we can modify it to actually calculate the molar mass of a gas. modified, that's what that word is. And that's a thing that they really love to do in AP chemistry. And it can be modified to this. And I'm going to write it instead of molar mass, mm, I'm going to write it as molar weight, mw, and I'll, I'll explain why. drt over p. So the molar mass or molar weight of a gas is the density times the ideal gas constant times the Kelvin temperature divided by the pressure. Cats, meow, MW, get that? Cats put dirt over their pee. Yeah, that's a, a way to remember that. So that's something that's kind of kind of added in here. And I'm going to write this in here right below that because this is a way that you can you can kind of figure this out. And then when we talk about this, the density for a gas is grams per liter. Okay, so that's just a, a thing that we can add on to that. So we'll do some ideal gas law problems, and um, we will do a lot of ideal gas law problems, and so you'll get some good practice with that. Now, besides ideal gases, we also have gases that are not necessarily at the ideal, at that ideal point. And sometimes we don't know what is the pressure, what is the temperature. But what we found, however, is that there's a relationship between volume, temperature, pressure, and even number of moles in there. We'll mostly focus on volume, pressure, and temperature. But when we deal with this stuff, we also have, um, they talk about the combined gas law. So we have the ideal gas law, and then I'm going to change um, pen colors here, and let's talk about the combined gas law. So the next set we're going to do and my pen's about to drop out of ink here, so let's try a different one. Let's use this one, combined gas law. So we've got our combined gas law here, and I'm going to write it down once over here, and this is P1 V1 T2 N2 equals P2 V2 T1 N1. The ones and twos are just say, hey, here's your pressure you started with, and here's your pressure you ended with. Here's the volume you started with, here's the volume you ended with. Notice that it's T2 over here. Here is the final temperature, the temperature you ended with. Here's the beginning temperature. Here's the final number of moles. Here's the beginning number of moles. And we'll, I'll come back to this equation, but the first thing we're going to talk about before we really focus on that is how did we come up with all these relationships between the volume, the temperature, the number of moles, and the, and the pressure here. And um, at different times in science, you have people that, uh, it's, it's like there are fad things to study. And for a while there, the fad thing to study was gases. So you have a lot of these guys coming up with these gas um, relationships all at one time. So the first one, though, is Avogadro. 
So again, I'm going to put these in alphabetical order, not, not necessarily when these things were discovered. So Avogadro's law says that equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure If you have a liter of each gas, they're at the same temperature and same pressure, are going to have the same number of particles. OK. So if you have a liter of different gases, like a liter of nitrogen and a liter of hydrogen, and they're at the same temperature and the same pressure, they're going to have the exact same number of particles. So they're going to have the exact same amount of stuff here. So let me, let me reword this a little bit. If you have one mole, so that's going to tell us how many particles, right? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. If you have one mole of any gas, doesn't matter what the gas is, at standard temperature and pressure, standard temperature and pressure, standard temperature, uh, zero degrees Celsius, pressure is one atmosphere, it's going to equal 22.4 liters. That's the volume. And so what they're saying here is they're using Avogadro's law to say, okay, well, let's just start off with the number of particles. Let's say they're at the same temperature and pressure, so it's, it's and we're going to say that temperature and pressure is, is one atmosphere and zero degrees Celsius. This is the volume. This is the volume, and it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles in here. So this is Avogadro's law. So Avogadro, there's A. There's the first one. The second one is Boyle's law. And here's our B. So this is Boyle's law. And Boyle's law, he is relating, he, he did all his, his experiments with volume and pressure. So he related volume to pressure. And he said that the volume and pressure, they are inversely proportional. If one goes up, the other goes down. I'm running out of room. That should say proportional. So if you write that out as an equation, P1V1 equals P2V2. OK, so look at this. Let's say we know this number on this other side. When you multiply these two numbers, let's say this is you know 10. That means if this number goes up, this one has to go down to make sure the answer stays to be 10. If one goes up, the other has to go down. That's what it means by saying, hey, they're inversely proportional. That word that I didn't finish out on here because I ran out of room. The third one, or the next one that we come into, into sync here, is going to be Charles' Law. So letter C, Charles' Law. And Charles, actually, he linked the volume and the temperature. And he found that they were directly proportional. If one goes up, the other goes up. So if you put that in uh, an equation, what you're going to say, and I'm going to write this in two ways, then we have V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So again, if I, if I divide these two numbers and the answer is 10, if this one goes up, this number also has to go up to maintain the same answer. Another way of writing that, if you don't like fractions, is V1 times T2 equals V2 times T1. Okay. We can even incorporate that, and we can also do the same thing with, with number of moles, because we can put that in here. So when you look up here at my combined gas law, not only does it have T, it also has the N for number of moles up here, too. The fourth one kind of pulls us away from the combined gas law, but again, I'm keeping this as um, A, B, C, D. So the fourth one is the D, and this is Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure. And what he says is that individual gases in a mixture have their own pressure.
Okay, so what does that mean? We call these, like, let's say you're just breathing in air right now. I, I, I really hope you are breathing in air right now. But if you're breathing in air right now, you know that it's mostly nitrogen, it's got some oxygen, it's got some carbon dioxide, it's got some, all sorts of gases that are in here, right? And what we say is, well, the nitrogen has its pressure, and the oxygen has its own pressure, and all of the other individual gases have their own pressures. These are called partial pressures. And if you add up the partial pressures, you get the total pressure. So it looks like this. Let's say if we have, we're talking about the, the pressure of the air, air pressure, it's going to be equal to the pressure of the nitrogen plus the partial pressure of the oxygen plus the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide plus the partial pressure of the uh, let's see, hydrogen that's in there, plus whatever other gases that are in there. So you can add these up. So if you have the total air pressure and you have all these other ones, if you're missing one, you can figure out what that missing one is. Again, find X on that one. So, so far, we've talked about the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, and we started talking about the combined gas law, and we get the combined gas law from Avogadro, Boyle, Charles, those three guys dealt with pressure and volume and temperature. And then we also have Dalton's law of partial pressure, and he's saying, hey, if you have this mixture of gases, each one has its own pressure, and you can get the partial pressure of that gas if you're just interested in one gas.